Nicole the Math Lady, and today we're talking about subtracting whole numbers and money. Now again, I think this will mostly be a review for you, but review is never a bad thing, so let's get to it. All right, I'm going to pick some easy numbers to start with. How about 14 minus 7? And before I do the math, you know I'm going to introduce some definitions to you. So in subtraction, these two numbers have different names. The top number, the number that we are going to be doing the subtracting from, is called the minuend. Minuend. And the bottom number, the amount that we are subtracting from the minuend, is called the subtrahend. I know, I was not really familiar with these terms for a long time in math. And I have an ecolism for you to help remember which one is which. If you look close, you might notice something. Minuend and subtrahend, if you pull certain letters out, it spells the word minus. And really, isn't that what subtraction is doing? We are minusing something. So that'll help you remember the M has to always be the first one. Minuend, then subtrahend. And this will be important when we get to talking about missing numbers in subtraction. So just remember that Nicolism. Let's keep it going. Let's do our subtraction. 14 minus 7 is 7. And this has a special name in math as well. It is called the difference. So there are your terms for subtraction. Let's keep it going and this time do a subtraction problem with money. There we have $54.32. That's our minuend. We've got $3.75, that's our subtrahend. Let's go ahead and subtract. Now, you're gonna notice right away we've got a bit of an issue. Can we do, can we subtract five from two? We don't seem to have enough, so in math we do something called borrowing. So I'm going to borrow, technically, 10 from my three. I'm gonna cross this three out, make this a two, and bring a one over to my 12. So I've borrowed 10, because really, this 3 is a 30. Hmm. Here we go. 12 minus 5, now we can do it, is 7. Oh wait, we have the same problem again, don't we? 2 minus 7, mm -mm, can't do it, so we're going to borrow again. And we're down to a 3, this goes to a 12. 12 minus 7, this time is 5. And you know me, I hit, I hit my decimal point, so I want to make sure that I don't forget them. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that decimal right now, and keep it going. 3 minus 3 is 0, 5 minus, there's nothing there, so it's still 5, and I'm going to add my dollar sign on, we've got $50.57. Now, I want to show you one of the cool parts about subtraction. Did you know that it has its own built-in answer checker? Yeah, it does. Watch. Take a look at this. So we subtracted, but if I want to know that if my answer is correct, I can do something called adding up. If I start at the bottom, 50.57, and I add $3.75 to it, it should equal 54.32. Let's see if it works. I'm going to rewrite my problem down here. 50, 50, 50.57. I'm going to add 3.75. And here we go. 7 and 5 is 12. 7 and 5 is 12, and 1 is 13. And there's my decimal, so I don't forget it. Keep it going. 3 and 1 is 4, and now we have our 5. Don't forget our dollar sign, and looky, looky, it adds back up. So what we say is that subtraction undoes addition, and addition undoes subtraction. And that's how we have our built-in answer checker. You might remember that for addition, I talked to you about the commutative property of addition, which tells us that it doesn't matter which order we add the add-ends in, we'll still get the same sum, right? You might remember 5 plus 3 is 8, but 3 plus 5 is also 8. But let's check and see, does this thing work for subtraction? Hmm, I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's say I had the number 11 minus 7. 11 minus 7 is 4. Let's try the same thing that we did here, over here with subtraction. So we're going to do 7 minus 11. Well, 7 minus 11 
we're, we're not going to get four. We're actually going to get a negative number, which is, we're not talking about that right now. So seven minus 11 does not give us four. Boom, boom, that's not correct. So what does that mean? It means that subtraction does not have a commutative property like addition does. And that's it. That's your quick review on subtracting whole numbers and money. I hope that was easy for you. I think so. All right. Hope you're having a great day and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.